In the previous video, we set up a compute ray tracer in Vulkan and drew to the screen. It looked like this. This is fine. This is nice. We've got our sphere. Currently, performance is about 4,000, 4,100 or so. There's something a little off about this, and that is that we're running a compute shader to fill in a storage image, and then we are sampling from that storage image and making a, a dummy quad over the whole screen. And I mean, we're in Vulkan now, we should be able to move beyond this silliness. And yeah, we totally can. I can't believe I didn't think about this, but hey, it happens. What I can do instead is upon swap chain creation, specify that I'm going to use the swap chain as a storage image, and then simply write the compute shader directly into the swap chain, direct injection, and then just present that image to the screen. Should work fine. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'll go to the run and I'll immediately return after creating everything. Okay, so that's returned. If we pop up to the top, maybe not that far. Okay. Upon swap chain creation, we can have a look at the surface and surface capabilities. We can support between two to eight images and so on and so on. But then right down, we have here our supported image usage, transfer source, transfer destination. So another option is we could fill a storage image and then transfer that directly into the swap chain. But we can also, where are we? Storage. We can also use this directly as a storage image. So let's do that. Let's go to the view Vulcan in it, and then to the swap chain. And then if I can find it, here we have image usage. I'm actually going to change this to, let's see if we can get away with this. Let's see if we can get away with just using it as a storage image, not even as a color attachment. I don't know, let's find out. Okay, so we've got that. And we can now create a storage image for the swap chain. The next thing I'm going to do is just go to the app and remove that return. That's fine. And if we look at the frame, so I'll close down all the rest of this, except for maybe storage image. Okay, so for this stuff, I'm just going to flip around a little bit. This will be a little messy, but I'm going to make a descriptor. So there is actually a lot of refactoring which needs to be done. Specifically, we can get rid of the storage image. We can go ahead and get rid of all of the render pass stuff. But for now, this is just proof of concept. I'll go ahead and clean this up later behind the scenes. So I've got this color buffer descriptor and I can probably leave the rest of this. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just go to the frame and I'll go through these steps. So first of all, we'll make the color buffer descriptor. And that will just be general as we're using it as a storage image. And then for the image view, we'll pass in the frames image view, which is basically its swap chain content. And then I guess for the sampler, we'll just put in a null pointer. Okay, excellent. Now I'll just go down to the right operations. Uh, why not? I'll just clear that out of the way. And I will have, I'll just call this, I'll call it a color buffer. There we go. And nothing here really needs to change. Just right down the bottom here. This needs to be the, the color buffer descriptor. So theoretically at this point, 
we should now have the color buffer, basically the swap chain image, described and set as binding zero in our descriptor set. This is where the storage image was previously. We're now going directly into the swap chain. So we can close all of this, fingers crossed, and go to the engine. And I'll just go down to the render stuff. So see here, we have this record draw commands for the screen. Let's make a bold mood move <laughs> or a bold mood and just get rid of all that stuff. Not going to use it at all. <clears throat> just get rid of that. So here's the step. First of all, we'll do a prepare to trace image transition. Then we'll dispatch the compute ray tracer. And then we will do another image transition, prepare to present. Okay, now the, again, if you're coming in from another bit, um, prepare to trace will basically capture the image and transition it from an undefined to a general layout. And that will happen basically at the start of the compute shader before the memory write operations occur. On the other hand, the I'll go prepare to present will capture the image and transition it from a general to a present source layout. And yep, that will start just after the compute shader and it will be completed basically by the end of the compute shader. So we'll go bottom of pipe. And that's it, that will transition the image. So again, I, I just want to appreciate how beautiful and simple this is. All we do is get our swap chain into a general layout, then the ray tracer compute shader does its thing on it, and then we transition it to a present layout. That's it, how nice is that? So we can just go right down to the render function and get rid of that um, that pipeline stuff. And we'll just go prepare to present. Okay, moment of truth, fingers crossed. There we have it, it's running. Performance is up from 4,100, 4,200 to, you know, the 4,000s inching up to the 5,000s. If we switch this over to release compilation, it'll be at about 5,000 frames per second. Ooh. Oh, but that's fine because this is frame buffer stuff. So we should be deleting this stuff anyway. We're not using frame buffers or render passes. So never mind the validation errors. That's fine. That'll be fixed up at some point behind the scenes. Here we have it. Now you could say, hey, wait a second. Running a render pass isn't that much extra stuff. I mean, it's just literally encoding six points on the screen, drawing a quad, that's very simple, very low overhead. Um, and my response to that is yes, but given how this process is actually working, it shouldn't be very low overhead, it should be zero overhead. Because in the compute shader, we've already written the stuff that we expect to be on the screen. Does that make sense? Anyway, look, I hope you enjoyed this stuff and I'll see you again soon. Have a great one. And that'll be it. All right. Bye.